Hey guys, welcome back to the Weekly Schlug. I'm Morgan, that's Angry Zach, and this is Highland Cycles. Welcome to our Weekly Schlug, which is our weekly vlog of shop work here at a small shop in Western Colorado, Montrose to be specific, where we mainly work on dirt bikes. Every now and then one of those things sneaks in. We try not to let that happen too often. But uh, it's gonna be a good week, we got lots going on. Zach is working on the carburetor on the KX250 uh, already this morning. Um, I'm going to be diving into the valve adjustment on a Honda CRF, which uh, I don't know if I've actually made a specific video about, so I'm gonna do that. Like, that buzzing you hear in the background is the ultrasonic cleaner, one of our favorite tools. Bing! And for all of you guys who have been with us for a long time, thank you all so very much. And if you don't follow us on the social medias, then you may not know that I have big news. I'm very happy to announce that we got the whale Minga. If you see a big, big whale with feathers and a beak and skinny little legs, then bingo, that's a whale Mingo. Wrapped. It's all wrapped and looking awesome. Super excited. InDesign Signs here in Montrose did that for us. Really, really happy with the way it turned out. Just super ecstatic. I have wanted a big, tall, long billboard van for a long time. I finally have one. A lot of that is thanks to you guys and this channel. I cannot say thank you enough. Uh, I gotta show you the, my favorite part. My wife, good idea. Hopefully you can see that with the sun. Dirt bikes. Anyway, let's get after it. Yeah! All right, guys, let's get to work on this Honda. It is a CRF 250R. Let's see what year. Yeah. All right. So here's a quick pro tip. If you don't know the year of the bike you're working on, look at the VIN, find the VIN. And most dirt bikes, it's gonna be right up here on the steering head. And you're gonna find the 10th digit of the VIN. So this one, and in this case, it's a number, and it's a five, so that means this is an 05. In uh, some cases, like anything after 2009, so 2010 and forward, it went back to being a uh, uh, letter, and then that letter corresponds to a certain year. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and get the top of this thing off and take a look at these valves, because that's what the customer brought it in for. Um, also, let's see. We can roll it through. It rolls through pretty easy. That uh, is usually a pretty good indication that the valves are tight, which is causing a lock, uh, causing a loss of compression. So, yeah, let's take the tank and seat off and get that valve cover off. Got the seat and tank off. Got the valve cover off. And taking a look in there, everything looks good. I like to take a look quickly, just glance at everything in there. It looks nice and shiny. And shiny is good inside of a motor. It should be nice and shiny and uh, oily, and it is. Oil looks a little bit dirty. Like if you look right in there, like where it collects, it's kind of dark, but I think it's okay. Um, we can uh, tell the customer. But other thing I do when I'm dealing with this is I take a look at the air filter since you get a nice quick look at it. Um, it's pretty dirty for sure, but uh, I don't know, it feels like it's got oil on it, so that's good. Um, around here in our Adobe dirt, that could happen in the ride, so. Um, all right, let's go grab our feeler gauges and take a look. <laughs> all right, guys, so take a look in here. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit. Hey, look at that, that's good. Okay, so these two lobes out here are the intake lobes on the outsides, and then this on Hondas, just has one uh, inner lobe, which is the exhaust. And let me see if I can get tight enough in. If you look in tight here, 
right there. That is the automatic decompression mechanism. And it works off of this weight that's over here. I can't actuate it because it's pointed down, but when the motor spins fast enough, this weight swings out and drops that little nubbin into a hole. So what you need to do when you're checking this thing, you don't actually have to get the thing at exact top dead center, but what you want to do is get it just past that little bump. You'll hear it click like that. There we go. So now both the exhaust cam and the intake cams are on their base circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 4,000 feeler gauge. There we go. Focus. There we go. And we're going to see if it goes in the uh, intakes. So it does not go in that one or the other one. Not a real surprise. <clears throat> the um, spec for a Honda for most of this style, you know, uh, overhead cam I like is four to six thousandths on the in intake and six to eight on the exhaust. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the exhaust since we can. So I got a six thou feeler gauge and it's actually different. So you can see here they sit on top of a, there's a rocker that goes. And that goes. So our exhausts are good. That's good. All right, so now I'm going to take my 2000s feeler gauge and I'm going to see if I can make it go uh, in these um, between the cam. And on this one, it goes. So on the left one, like I said, I know it's, it's upside down for you guys because you're hanging on the handlebars. But on the left or, you know, as you're sitting on the bike, I've got 2000s clearance. So that means I just need to do some math on that one. Well, let's check this right one. So the 2000s does not go in the right. So that means I'm going to have to guess on the shim size for that one uh, to make it smaller. But on the left one, we can do some math because we know that it's, I can get 2000s, but I can't get four. Um, so we can do some math here on those. But now we got to take this out so uh, that we can get to the buckets, pull those shims out and measure them and go back together. All right, guys, so now what we gotta do is get the cam out of the way. Um, on the 250, 450s are a little bit different than this. They have bolts that hold the cam gear to the cam. You gotta do those, take them off. 250s are a little bit different. Um, let me show you how we do this. So start. We're going to take the tension off the cam chain. Um, we already know we're not exactly at top dead center, but we're actually really close. Um, and that's good enough. So uh, now what we're going to do is take this bolt out and get a flat blade screwdriver and come in here and take the tension off. All right, so nice, long, skinny flat blade. We're going to come in. I'm going to turn it righty tighty and you'll feel it. It's like spring tension. So you get to where it stops and you just kind of uh, twist it a little bit. And there we go. That takes the tension off. Now we need 10 millimeter sockets. Pop those cam caps off. All right, so we got the cam caps off. There's nothing special about that. And one thing though that you need to make sure is when you take those cam caps off, you want to make sure that you don't have any pressure on any of the valves, which you already did. We already did that when we checked the valves to make sure we were on the base circle, so that's good. Now, to get this cam chain off, you have to take this gear, or excuse me, you have to take this bearing and slide it over and let it drop. There we go. Now, on Hondas specifically, I really don't like to drop this chain. So I'm gonna set this camera down. What I like to do is take something, this works great, and just put that through. That holds that cam chain up. The main reason, uh, it's not that you can't get it back out of there because the magnet or whatever you can pull it. But the problem with Hondas is that they tend, when you drop them that far, they'll come off the bottom gear that's on the crank. 
and then it is a nightmare struggle fight to get that back um, on there. And anyway, it's a hassle. So I like to do that. Now I'm gonna grab a magnet and uh, pull these buckets off. Now, like I said, we know that this one is the one that has two thousandths, but not four. So we need to give it two more thou of clearance. All right, so there's our shim. I don't know, let's see if you can see that. There is the shim. Uh, you guys aren't gonna be able to see it, but I flipped it over. You can actually read a number on that side. If you look at it, it's 255. So that's 2.55 millimeters thick. So we need to take away, because to add clearance, we need to make this shrink. So we need to take away two thousandths. Well, like I said, this shim is from the uh, from the valve that has two thousandths, but only two thousandths, and we need four to six. So two thousandths is equal to 0.05 uh, millimeters, and since this is a 2.55 millimeter shim, I want to give it four more thousandths of clearance. That'll get us to um, right at six. So that means I need to go down to a 2.45 or 2.45. So let me go grab one of those out of the box. There you go. So hot cans, 2.45. We'll go put that in. There's Kenny. So this is one of the things you gotta be real careful as you're putting these in. Cause you don't wanna drop that down in there. <laughs> it would be a bad day. So just be careful. Get down, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bucket over it to protect it from getting knocked out. All right, so now I'll get the other one. All right, so this came off the valve that doesn't have any clearance, so we just have to guess <laughs> we'll go smaller um, and then we're gonna have to put it all back together measure it and then set it set our lash so this one i can't see any markings on oh no there we go okay you guys can't see that but i can see it barely it says 260 so it's 2.60 <clears throat> so when i have to guess like this um like i said the only reason i'm guessing is that i can't put any feeler gauge under there so there's no way of knowing how tight it is because <laughs> it could be holding it open a fair amount or it could just barely be touching but either way so uh at 260 um i'm gonna go i usually go down like five sizes um because that'll be let's see two of them that's like so if I go down five sizes, that's ten thousandths. Um, so it could be too far, um, but that's okay. Uh, Cause I usually, if I go five sizes down, that will at least get me some clearance and then I can do my math and check it out. So I'm gonna go grab, that's a 260. So uh, five sizes down is gonna be 255, 250, 245, uh, 240, 235. And guys, shops like my, we charge an hour and a half for this job. Uh, some shops charge a little more, some a little bit less, but it doesn't really take that long to do it most of the time. Um, but what we are charging for is our knowledge, obviously. And then also we're charging for the fact that we have piles of shims here in boxes. And that's really expensive <laughs> to have just sitting here. Um, so if you're worried about the price of doing it what you can do and do it yourself um is take everything apart get your measurements come into a shop like me and buy shims take them home the problem is if you're guessing on one which we are you might put it all back together measure it then need to change it again then anyway it can be a hassle so um or i'd be happy to sell you a shim kit it's just i forget how much they are it's 100 and, might be almost 200 bucks for that size so anyway i put these in uh Put the bucket back on and I'll show you how we check it. All right, so we got our bucket back on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cam and we're gonna put it down in there without putting the chain on it. 
and put our caps on and tighten them down. And the reason I'm not putting the chain on and I'm not worrying about timing it is because I know that probably I'm going to have to take this back off. So we'll come in here. Always a good thing. Check make sure it's moving smoothly. It is thing to pay attention to on Hondas and Yamahas is that clip right there. That is a clip for lining the bearing. You don't want to drop that because it usually, don't ask me how I know, but it usually falls down in there and then is a giant nightmare to retrieve. And all of a sudden, an hour and a half isn't even close to enough time. All right, so now we do need to tighten these down. We just don't have to go crazy on them, uh, but we do need to put some pressure on there. Otherwise, you're not getting a really good reading. So, Zach needs to borrow a tool and it's gonna cost it. <laughs> Here we go. <coughs> gonna get punched in the face! <laughs> yeah. Got our cam caps tightened down, just snugged up. Um, I like to see it, make sure it moves. Definitely nothing dragging. So now, gonna check our four thousandths make sure it goes in this one which it should no problem but now I know that the four goes in that one that was that was the cam or that was the uh, valve that we just did the math on so shouldn't have too much trouble but what I want to make sure is that it's not too much so I got my six thousandths and that should be right at what it's uh, set for so I got our six. I'm gonna roll this to where it's not touching. And I can feel that's perfect actually. There's just a little bit of drag on the six. There's no way we'll just try an eight just to make sure, but eight won't go, so we're good. That one's right on the money. So now let's start with the four on the one that we guessed on. That's good. Actually, some drag on that. We might be right at four. So I'm gonna, now this one also has five. So all right. So actually, we got lucky. The five uh, is just perfect. There's just the right amount of drag. So we know we're at right at six and five. That's perfect. That's just fine. Uh, I'm not going to chase down the extra thousandth out of that to get it to six. Um, that will be right on the money. It's right in the middle of spec now. So we're all good. Um, time to retime this thing. I'm show you guys how we do that. All right, guys. So now we need to retime this thing. Um, now with uh, Yamahas and a lot of others, you can actually like zip tie the chain to the gear and just leave it all and, and that works uh, it doesn't work with Hondas you got to get that cam all the way out of the way so you can't do that so now what we need to do is get the piston at top dead center um, and then we can time our uh, cam to that but all together would be good to go got those cam caps back off uh, got our cam sitting here so um, yeah we're gonna pull our inspection plug out here and then we can rotate the motor, make sure we're at top dead. We'll get that done. Uh, oh, there we go. You guys can see it. So see that there's two marks there. The one on the left is uh, the firing mark. And the one that's lined up right with that cutout in the uh, cover is top dead center. So it's actually right on the money. I got lucky there. So. I'm going to leave that. Now we're going to get our cam. And now what we're looking for, let's see if I can show you guys this. So you see that little tick mark right there on the very outside of that gear? Right there, and then there's one there. And you want those lined up with this cylinder head surface when that timing mark is lined up at top dead center. So we're right on the money. Sometimes it's a fight. Um, but you know, take your time, get it done. Uh, now we're still not 100% sure because when you release the tension on this cam chain, it's going to move things a little bit. 
Um, now I've done this a lot of times, so I know about what the slack is going to cause, uh, so I think we're good. Um, but you still want to check it again before you just go ahead and try to kickstart the bike. So um, feel good about that. Let's put those cam caps back on, then we'll release tension on the cam chain. All right, guys. So we got the cam caps on. I'm getting ready to tighten them down. Just want to make a note, or not make a note. I just want to let you guys know this is like the most important time to be good with a torque wrench because a lot of things honestly don't matter that much as long as you got a good feel. Uh, you know, you're not stripping and all that stuff. But for cylinder head things and stuff with four strokes, you really want to be careful, especially these. These are not quite as important as. Um, Yamaha's in the style that the cam just rides directly in the aluminum. At least there are bearings on both sides. There's one win for Honda here. Um, but uh, you want to be careful. So these you want to set to 8 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go grab the torque wrench, get that done real fast. Right. Awesome. So got the cam caps tightened down to 8 foot-pounds. Everything's good. Now we can release this. So all you do is you just back that off a little bit and then you should feel it spring back in. So then you can feel up here, make sure it feels good. And then we're gonna roll. And I, it's really hard to show you guys that, but trust me when I say that that mark is right on the money. We come up here and look, and our tick marks are right on the money there. So, awesome. Now, uh, I feel good about that. Everything's, you know, tight, ready to go. So before I go ahead and put everything back together, I like to come back over to the Kickstarter and roll it through real slow, especially make sure I don't have the spark plug cap or anything on there so it doesn't start, just in case I mess anything up and the valves want to touch the piston or something like that if I got somehow completely screwed this up. That way I won't try to start and hurt anything. We can just roll it real slow. Um, well, that already feels way better than it did. So, awesome. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna put you guys down. I'm gonna slap the top of this thing back on here and we'll kickstart it and see if it starts. All right, guys, got the top of the motor all put back together, got the tank on it, gas on, chokes on, and now the moment of truth to see if this fixes his starting problem. Um, because he dropped it off <clears throat> and just said, I need the valves adjusted because it's getting hard to start. Like, he didn't say, check out and make sure anything else is wrong or whatever. Uh, so I figured we'd start with that um, after rolling it through before doing it and feeling the kind of lack of compression. I'm pretty sure this is going to take care of it. But you never know. It could also end up being something else. There's that. You'd be mean. Looking for a flywheel puller. got the Honda done starts and runs great I uh, got levers on it called the guy he's gonna come pick it up today he's super excited uh, and it was awesome because I told him how much it was it's 180 bucks with the levers and the valve adjust and everything and he was super stoked he thought it was gonna be way more than that um, so that always feels good uh, now it's time for a super fun project mr. Garrett Anderson one of our patrons and one of our big supporters and longtime customers is uh, making his YZ450FX street legal. And in a lot of states, that would be really hard to do. But in Colorado, it's not hard at all. So let's get to work. All right. So here is the 701V of Garrett Anderson. And the thing I love about Colorado is that for a relatively tiny amount of work, we can make a bike like this 
into a street legal motorcycle. So let me go over what is required here in the state for that. So here in Colorado, all you have to have is a headlight, a tail light, a brake light, so it has to get brighter when you hit the brake, and you can just do uh, the rear brake or the front brake or both, but we just do the rear, it's the easiest. A horn and a mirror. And the horn that we use is this cute little thing that uh, is uh, battery powered and you can charge it up with the USB. And it's really loud. Um, so yeah, we just hang that thing on there. Uh, oh, and you have to have DOT legal tires. So Garrett brought me a set of Kenda Parker um, DTs to put on here to get it past inspection. Uh, yeah, so. All right, let's put some stuff on here. I got a pretty cool thing for the headlight. Super stoked. Uh, big thanks to Mark Slubber and uh, Task Racing for this. Um, Garrett is wanting to maybe race the Baja 1000 in a couple years and maybe come down and pre-run with us this year. And um, so instead of just going with some cheesy little headlight that would just get him past inspection, we decided to go with something nice. It's nice and bright. You can actually go night riding with and we'll pass inspection too. So task racing, honestly, like if you don't have a KTM, uh, and even if you do have a KTM, but if you don't have a KTM and you can't go with Moto Minded, because uh, Moto Minded is really, really awesome for the way they, the fit and finish and how they work with the OEM stuff and it just looks really nice. Um, but they don't make anything for anybody but the European bikes. So really psyched to do this big six inch light bar I got all the lights hooked up let me show you what we got going on here so we have the wires this this black wire and this red wire are the wires from the harness that comes with the task racing and it comes forward there's a fuse comes forward I got it going underneath uh, where the tanks gonna go right there underneath the air box it comes up comes to this plug and that plug goes to the light and so the light works now well, that's awesome and then off of this plug what I did or off of the power wire I spliced into that I came back with this red wire tied it in across here coming over here comes up it splits in here I've got it's kind of hard. I got it all tied up out of the way. But it comes up, and what it does is it Ys. Um, and one of those Ys goes to the running light of the tail light. So there we go. Running light on. The other Y goes to... Comes down to a new brake light switch that we have there. Then from that it goes... The power comes to it. This is normally off then when you push it it connects comes back up and goes to the brake light i'll show you works awesome obviously i have a lot of cleaning up to do put the tank and all that stuff back on but we're good all the wiring is done i'm really happy with the way it looks um i need to clean a few things up zip tie some things uh, electrical tape some things but in general, it works. Uh, if you guys ever need to wire up a tail light, if you buy the Acherbis, it shows you what wires do what. It's super easy. If you guys are watching this and you want to see me do an in-depth tutorial on wiring one of those up, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not going to do it right away, <clears throat> but if you guys really want to see it, I'll do it. Um, so yeah, pretty excited about that. Um, going to now. I'm going to put the. Uh, tires on it. I should have a mirror showing up tomorrow. I'll get the mirror on here um, And then we'll be ready to go and we'll have the state patrolman come and inspect it be ready to rock Okay guys, we got the YZ 450 FX all street legalized um, Again, let me go over what that takes here in Colorado, which is not much. You need a headlight You need a tail light that gets brighter when you hit the brake. Boom, just like that. You need a horn 
and you need a mirror. The mirror is the only thing that's not here. It's coming. It'll actually be here Monday. Um, I'll put that on there. Um, but then the other thing, the last thing you need is DOT legal tires. And these Kendas, the uh, Parker DT, they are one of my favorite street legal uh, knobby tires for where we live, for in the West. They're great desert tires. They're nice and aggressive and knobby. So if you want to put them on and then actually just leave them on and not take them right back off uh, once you get your inspection, they actually work pretty good. <clears throat> Garrett, who owns this bike, uh, had these laying around, so he's like, I'll just run them until I burn them off. So put them on. Uh, let me show you guys what they're looking for if you ever do this. Right there. DOT. And I'm sure it's over here somewhere. Yeah. DOT. That's all they look for. <coughs> so, super cool. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, like I said, next week we'll have the mirror on there. We'll get him through his inspection. Uh, then he can ride right from his house and go. Right on guys, awesome week at the shop. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that was informative. I hope you learned something. Hope you had fun, all that good stuff. Um, finishing the week up here, Zach, there's my kid. <laughs> Zach is almost done with the CT90. Um, got the carb rebuilt, got new air filter, new fork seals, fork boots, all new cables, uh, valve adjustment, check the timing. Uh, fixing a hole that holds the bottom of the um, or holds the foot pegs on one of those is stripped out so he's got the, he's helicoid on that thing um, so yeah that thing's almost done uh, he is fixing the slave cylinder on that we'll check in next week with you on that thing and uh, show you how that turned out but uh, I think it should be good Ooh, also I got the stator in today for the old YZ250 it's over there next to the angry man who's hiding and uh, <laughs> So we'll check in next week on that, see if we got that fixed. I think we should. Uh, then we're going to do a little bottom end, top end, and everything on this 300, just as preventative. It's just got a whole bunch of hours on it, so he's ready to just rebuild that. And we are headed to a super-duper secret location to ride this weekend. So make sure you subscribe because there will be a ride video coming out after this um, of a really cool place here near Montrose that I'm just not allowed to say exactly where it is. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. And as always, I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to get out and ride your, your dirt, dirt